All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about microdeletion syndromes. And throughout the genetics unit, the lectures are really a series of diseases that are grouped together by their genetic mechanisms, either their inheritance or some kind of genetic defect that occurs that's common to all of the diseases and that helps explain and help you remember them. So first, before we get into the diseases, let's talk about what a microdeletion is. So we'll go to the whiteboard here. So if we have a chromosome like this, a microdeletion is when a portion of the chromosome is deleted or removed. And so what happens is, is then you get a shortened chromosome in that region there. And so this joins with this, and you end up with this. And so all of this genetic material in here is missing. And as you can imagine, in many cases, that can result in devastating effects. And hence, that's what results in some of these diseases that we're about to cover. So accrued cat syndrome. So this is a microdeletion on chromosome 5. So a portion of chromosome 5 is removed or deleted. And for many of these diseases, the underlying genetic mechanism is not always fully understood. For test purposes, what you really want to focus on are the clinical features, because these are what are going to help you distinguish these in a question stem and help you get the question right. So these patients have problems with cognitive development, and so they'll have retardation, microcephaly. The key characteristic to this syndrome is they have a cry that sounds like a cat. That's where the name of the disease comes from. They often have a ventricular septal defect, which if you remember from anatomy, is if you have your four chambers like this, and this would be your left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle, and that is a defect in this septal wall. So you can have blood shunting essentially from the right ventricle to the left or from the left to the right, depending on the pressure gradient. They also have some unique facial features. Uh, they have a round face with full cheeks, and they have widely spaced eyes, and then they'll have these epicanthal folds, which you see in the picture here, which is a fold off the upper eyelid that then covers the corner of the eye, as you can see here. And so this is another feature that they can have. So Williams syndrome, this is due to a microdeletion on chromosome 7. And one of those genes deleted is the elastin gene. So as a result of that, they're going to have decreased elastin, which significantly contributes to some of the cardiovascular problems they have, such as narrowing of the major vessels, which then impacts the valves. An example of that that they can commonly have is called supravalvular aortic stenosis. So if you have the aortic valve like this, and you have the leaflets like this, You have the left ventricle like this. Just above, you have this narrowing like this in the aorta. Which creates a stenotic effect, so a narrowing of the, of the vessel. And so when blood is, is pumped out, even though the integrity of the valve is perfectly fine, the leaflets itself, it still encounters this stenosis here. just distal to the aortic valve opening, and so that creates problems as well. And this is due to that loss of elastin, because elastin is such a major contributor to the structural integrity of the great vessels, the aorta, the pulmonary artery, and the superior and inferior vena cava. These patients will also demonstrate retardation, and they will also have unique facial features, a broad forehead, a short nose, full cheeks. Some people have described this as an elf-like face. These patients, they'll have good verbal skills. They'll be extremely friendly in their demeanor. They'll readily greet strangers, start a conversation. And these are similar to Angelman syndrome, retardation, these facial features being extremely friendly, similar to Angelman syndrome, which we'll talk about in the uniparental disomy lecture, along with prader willi which is another disease with a similar type genetic defect. With Angelman syndrome, the thing is, though, is they, they have poor verbal skills, and that's how you can differentiate these two. So if you see this presentation, you want to keep Williams syndrome and Angelman syndrome in mind, but you want to pay attention to the verbal skills, because if they're good verbal skills, then it's Williams syndrome. Williams syndrome patients also have hypercalcemia. Velocardiofacial syndrome is a result of a microdeletion on chromosome 22Q11, which is related to DeGeorge syndrome, which we'll talk about on the next slide. Very similar to DeGeorge syndrome, they can have palate malformation, congenital heart disease, and face defects. So cleft lip and cleft palate, these are two distinct pathologies. They can often happen together, but they can also happen in isolation. They're a result of 
defects in development, specifically of the branchial apparatus, um, which we'll talk a little bit more in detail in the next slide when we talk about DeGeorge syndrome. So defects in development in that, in that structure in the head and neck can result in lack of fusion in these folds, which can leave either a cleft lip, cleft palate, and you can see where it can occur unilaterally or bilaterally. Luckily, these can typically be pretty easily repaired with surgery. DeGeorge syndrome, this is a microdeletion on chromosome 22q11, similar to velocardiofacial syndrome. Key thing here is it's abnormal development of the third and fourth brachial pouches. So here's the picture here of the, of the brachial pouches. So first you have the arches. So just to give you some context here, so this would be your first arch. This would be your second arch. Here's your third arch, fourth. The pouches are these little pockets in here. So this is a pouch. This would be the first pouch. This would be the second pouch, the third pouch, and the fourth pouch here. These in here are the clefts. Now, all these lead to development of, of certain structures. We're not going to get into that. That's beyond the scope of this lecture. That's more of an embryology lecture. But for the purposes of DeGeorge syndrome, what's important to remember is, is that the third pouch here, so the third pouch is, re is responsible for thymus development. And remember, thymus is for T cell maturation, remember T and T, a little in your immunology, similar to where B cells are developed are mature in the bone marrow, remember B and B. And so if you have abnormal development of the third pouch, you're going to have thymic aplasia because you're not going to be able to develop the thymus because this is the source of the thymus. Now the third and the fourth pouches are both responsible for development of all of the parathyroid glands. And there's typically four of them on the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland. And these obviously produce parathyroid hormone, which is involved in calcium homeostasis. So if you don't have these, you're gonna have parathyroid aplasia, no parathyroid hormone, you're gonna have hypocalcemia. Now, abnormal development of the third and fourth pouches is gonna affect the first and second pouches, which is where you can get these cleft palate defects as well. And one thing I'll point out with thymic aplasia is they'll have a decreased T cell count. And as a result of that, these patients often suffer from recurrent infections uh, and, and being immunocompromised. And then lastly here, these patients often have cardiac defects. Now this is a result of genes that are deleted as part of the microdeletion. One of those important genes that you could actually potentially see on, a, on an exam, not extremely high yield, but uh, not out of the question at all, is TBX1. And this codes for transcription factors that are important for tissue development during embryonic uh, development. And one of the thought roles of TBX1 is actually in neural crest development and formation and migration. And cardiac neural crest cells, specifically neural crest cells that migrate to the heart during development, play a significant role in the outflow tract, meaning the, where the great vessels leave the right and left ventricles, so the pulmonary artery and the aorta. And the lack of those neural crest cells migrating and helping with the formation of the outflow tract, you have often a deformed outflow tract, which can contribute to tetralogy of Fallot or truncus arteriosus, which are congenital heart defects specifically of, of those structures. And so these patients can have those as well. So the key takeaway is, you know, chromosome 22Q11 could be definitely asked on an exam, third and fourth pouches. Because of that, they have decreased thymus formation. As a result, decreased T cell count, immunocompromised. Third and fourth contribute to parathyroid gland, parathyroid aplasia, hypocalcemia, and then cardiac defects, specifically tetralogy of flow and truncus arteriosus. prader willi and Angelman syndromes, these can be caused by chromosomal microdeletions. However, we're going to talk about them in the uniparental diasomy lecture because they are also caused by that mechanism as well. And so we'll talk about them in more detail in that lecture later on in the unit. All right, so that closes out our discussion of microdeletion syndromes.